We're back with the breakfast this morning and uh, Monday Thomas joins us as we talk sports. Monday, it's good to have you join us weekend after, almost the weekend after the World Cup, right? It's good to have you join us this morning. How are you today? I'm fantastic. Good morning. I mean, talking about the World Cup, I mean, five days after the World Cup, they are still celebrating in Argentina, the streets of uh, Rosario and Buenos Aires. Well, I like, yes. I, like, I like us to hold it there. Let's not even get into the analysis of it because I know that, you know, you're willing. But let's start home first. You know, they say charity begins at home. Uh, for us at home, the Nigerian Football Federation, that's the NFF, has denied knowledge of a report of a joint bid uh, process with the Republic of Benin to host the African Cup of Nations in 2025. You know, that's a lot. I'd like to share your thoughts on that, especially when, you know, if you remember, Nigeria and Ghana had hosted uh, the African Cup of Nation in 2000, right here in Nigeria. And of course, Lagos and Kanu, you know, was where we had the place. So what exactly is about this denial? Is it not possible? Have we not done this before? Of course, we are not strangers in uh, hosting the Nations Cup. We hosted it in 1980, and we also hosted it in 2000, just like you rightly Hinted, and uh, it was a joint bid with uh, the Black Stars of Ghana. And uh, for the NFF not being aware, it goes to show that uh, there is no harmony when it comes to football structure in Nigeria. So it looks like the Ministry of Youth and Sports are the ones orchestrating this, and they're doing that without the knowledge of the NFF, as confirmed by uh, Felix uh, Anya Siagu, uh, which is the first vice president of the NFF. He's saying, hey, I'm not, I'm not sure of this processing. I'm, I've not heard of it, and uh, it's not something we are aware of. Although we've not heard from the horse's mouth, which is the, the man on the highly exalted seat of the NFF, I'm talking about the newly elected president, uh, Musa Agasso. So, but of course, uh, Felix Anyasi also is someone with uh, a credible authority to also say that, hey, he's gotten no idea about what is happening uh, with the bead and uh, so far. But it's confirmed, CAF confirmed it, that Nigeria, alongside the likes of uh, Morocco and uh, as, as well as Senegal, have beat it for the 2025 edition of the African Cup of Nations. Do not forget, it was later to be hosted by Guinea, uh, but uh, CAF had discovered that they don't have enough facilities. And now to your question now, uh, do, are we not, uh, of course, uh, a credible country to host the, the, uh, the Nations Cup? Yes, I think we are. We've hosted many uh, big tournaments. I can remember in 2019, uh, 2009, I beg your pardon, we hosted the World Cup, the Under-17 World Cup, being that the, we are the most successful nation when it comes to age-grade football, Under-17, to be very precise. We've got enough in our arsenal, in our minerals, to host the 2025 uh, Nations Cup. But just that the NFF are on the way, as uh, said by uh, uh, the first vice president, it, it, it's, a, it's a cause for worry. It looks like we don't have how many as far as football structures concerned here in the country. Mm. Monday, uh, you know, talking about the fact the NFF is unaware uh, makes me, or they're saying they're unaware, makes me ask, you know, are they supposed to be aware? Okay, if they were aware, are they the ones who are going to fund this bid? Um, one might think that this is not an issue because um, this such uh, moves come from the highest uh, uh, level of governance in the country, talking about the presidency or the cabinet. And um, isn't this above the pay grade of uh, Felix Ayasiago and his chairman? Um, should they be informed if, for instance, the federal government feels they want to, to bid? Should they inform the NFF or the NFF? Would they, would they do anything about it? Do they even have the funds to do anything about it? Shouldn't this be a government thing, you know, um, uh, as far as the structure of football in Nigeria is concerned, not really the NFF? Uh, Kofi, as far as the FIFA rules are concerned, it is uh, stated that government should not interfere in football, but this is not interfering. This is trying to help football in Nigeria, but they are doing that without the knowledge of the NFF, which is a body which is a power state set aside by the government to control football. So if you ignore them, that is, uh, that is you saying that this particular group that you appointed to run football in Nigeria are not competent enough uh, to put up a bid for uh, the uh, nation's cup. You, you're right. It is the uh, government, the federal government, that are going to fund every single thing with uh, the help from CAF, which is the Confederations of African Football. Of course, it is the government that are going to do um, the much of the bidding. But when it comes to structuring, when it comes to making things happen, it's not just the money that will make things happen. The NFF will now be in control 
of the money and they will make sure this money goes into uh the right project to host the nation's cup so by any means possible i think 100 percent the nff should be aware of uh, that beat but just like it's sadly stated that they are not away let's just wait for musa gasso he's yet to speak on this particular one and uh, we, we simply need to hear from him so we know uh, what to do moving forward but a, a quick follow-up to that is is nigeria ready i mean this is 2022 we're talking about 2025 guinea has had its fair share of issues including the coup um I mean, if you take out 2023, we have elections. When new government comes in, which it will, it may take time to settle down, which leaves uh, uh, just over a year to really, really focus on this. It's like you're ready. I know we have a stadium, we have the cities, but it, that's, it, it takes a lot more to host a, a, a Nations Cup, a tournament as big as that. So it is, it's, it's, it's that time, if Nigeria to be successful, to put things in place by 2025. Of course, there is time. 2025, we have one year, 2024, to uh, prepare for it, and as well as uh, 2023. On the 10th of uh, next month, uh, I beg your pardon, on the 10th of uh, February next year, we are going to know who is going to host the next Nations Cup, and if it's going to be Nigeria, who's going to host the 2025 Nations Cup? If it's going to be Nigeria, then I think we have enough time to prepare. Remember how many days we took to host Africa in the CAF Convergence Cup final here in the beautiful city of Uyuro at the Gosselo Pabi International Stadium. It took us, it took Nigeria, it took Aquabum just six days to m make sure the stadiums are, of course, international standard. The stadium is already international standard, but they needed to brush over. They needed to make sure it's good enough for visitors outside the country. In Lagos, we've got some facilities. In Abuja, uh, the M. Biola Stadium, it's, it's a big, it's a massive place, and it just needs some brushing, and that's what we need. We just need a few months. 12 months is enough for Nigeria to get ready. The World Cup that it just concluded had just eight World Cup stadiums. And it hosted 30 or uh, 64 matches, 32 nations. The World uh, the Nations Cup is 24 nations. And we need about just five good stadiums. And I think Nigeria is capable if they are, of course, willing. Well, let, let's now delve to the World Cup. Uh, looking at uh, the fact that it's come to an end, having... Argentina winning over France. I mean, what's your thoughts, really? Can you see my thoughts from my face? <laughs> of course. Let's have you say <laughs> one or two. Uh, it, it was it was really um, very engaging at the time, especially when you had the second play, you know, second out in a leg, if you like to say, and the fact that, you know, it ended in a penalty. But um, I, I'd like to share your thoughts on that, the outcome of that game, Argentina and, of course, France. I'm not going to take sides, but I'm pretty sure you both will agree with me that uh, it was the greatest ever World Cup Finals that I've ever seen. I don't know if Kofi has seen something greater or Messi would have seen something more massive than what we saw. An incredible action. Two goals in the first 45 minutes, two in the second 45 minutes, and uh, uh, two in the extra time. It, it showed that it was by far the greatest World Cup final with the likes of Kylian Mbappe scoring three goals, the, first, the last player to score three goals in the finals, George uh, Goff of uh, England in uh, 1966. Fantastic, fantastic final it was. And uh, a lot of people will argue time and over uh, that uh, Lionel Messi scored penalties to win the World Cup and also winning the Golden Ball for the second consecutive time. He did that, not the second consecutive time, the last time he did it was in 2014. Uh, winning it again in uh, 2022 is the only player to win two golden balls and uh fantastic uh, for uh, Lionel andres messi and the world cup final also came uh, saw the end of the goat uh, goat debate between Cristiano Ronaldo and messi i would say that and uh, with all of my chest i think Lionel messi is now the undisputed goat and uh, is the goat with the big letter g and maybe Cristiano Ronaldo is a goat with a small letter g all right. Um, you know, you, you talked about uh, this being the greatest final. Uh, I think that some people may may also put the uh, the 1950 World Cup final where uh, Uruguay defeated Brazil in the final. Yes, in 1952, win their second and last World Cup uh, because it was uh, played at the Great um, Maracanã Stadium in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, Rio de, de Janeiro, rather. Uh, it was um, a big disappointment for Brazil of those years. Um, the reports, right. yeah, the reports that people were throwing their food on the streets because they couldn't eat dinner <laughs> that day. But, but indeed, this was really thrilling. Uh, talking about the goat, the goat argument. 
um, the conversation seems to have moved on, sadly, for Cristiano Ronaldo, from comparing uh, comparison between himself and Messi to now comparing Messi to uh, or with. Um, Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Pele. Okay, yeah, to now comparing Lionel Messi with the Diego Armando uh, Maradona. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Does Messi's uh, feet uh, place him on the same level to be compared with Maradona or even make him greater than uh, Maradona? All right, all right. Maradona, fantastic play, won two World Cups in his uh, days. But I think Lionel Messi has outclassed him. Lionel Messi has played more World Cup matches than any other player on earth. 26 World Cup matches. He has contributed to more goals, more than any other player on earth. I mean, the only player to win two Golden Balls. He has done enough. He has done enough to be the ultimate GOAT. And I think, well, as far as Argentina is concerned, Lionel Messi has done the uh, exact same thing, if not more, uh, than Diego Maradona did. But, of course, they are playing in different eras. And different eras came with different style of play. In, uh, in this current era, we get to see more sophisticated technology, uh, medically proven that players recover faster uh, than uh, those days where Diego Maradona was playing. I mean, it was much more difficult back in the 70s and the 80s. Players who used to go injured and they, they have to stay injured for some times. And even Diego Maradona had to, of course, go for drugs to help him uh, play football in the same level. So... It, they're playing in different eras, and we should try not to go back in time. Lionel Messi has done enough. Uh, Diego Maradona did enough at that time. They are, they are all goats. They are all great, and uh, we should stop putting them on the list. On the list, and uh, they are all great. I mean, I, I'm not going to uh, take a stand on Lionel Messi saying that he's greater than Diego Maradona. If people, someone maybe older than me who saw Diego Maradona, what he did. Uh, in Napoli, I'm telling you, Napoli is a god. No one will agree in Napoli that Ma Messi is greater than Maradona because those in Napoli had a feeling, a direct feeling of what Maradona did. The last time uh, Napoli won the Sierra R, it was Maradona that won it for them. So they have this feeling. So I can't come here and take sides and say, all right, Messi has done enough, he's greater than Maradona and the rest. Not everyone will agree to that for certain. All right, let's delve into, you know, other aspects of the World Cup in terms of the conduct of the World Cup. I mean, you also, uh, how would you rate it? Uh, looking at the referees, um, also looking at the behavior of the, uh, you know, the players on the pitch and off the pitch. Uh, for instance, citing an example, Martinez, in the course of celebration, seemed to, you know, have actually delved into making a serious mockery of Mbappe. Also, on the other hand, Mbappe had made some comment about, uh, you know, South, South Americans and what have you. And so, uh, you know, it's it's a back and forth. On the other hand as well, especially, you know, at the World Cup final, if you look at the penalty that was caused by Di Maria, with uh, that of course Messi you know won that particular penalty some people think that it wasn't supposed to be awarded so what are your thoughts really officiating this match the behavior of the players on on, on the pitch and off the pitch and all of that uh, the World Cup it's the greatest for me I mean the 2022 World Cup but you know we are all humans we can't get things right perfectly we, we saw some controversial calls uh, especially that Christian Ronaldo's header uh, against uh, I think against Uruguay, where he tried to score, and uh, the, the goal was counted in his name, and later on he had to be rechecked, and uh, the goal was taken off. And we've seen, it's, it's a World Cup where we've seen human errors, but when it comes to the pitch of play, I think we should all focus on the upsets, which is, of course, exciting. It's good to see that upsets are happening in world football. The likes of uh, Saudi Arabia beating Argentina. And we also saw Japan beating uh, Germany. Imagine uh, that uh, crazy encounter that happened in Group H where Germany were knocked out and Spain qualified by just the whiskers. So it's, it's a great World Cup. We should focus on what happened on the pitch of play rather than the human errors. Cristiano Ronaldo uh, didn't do much. I mean, it was expected at the age of 37. Lionel Messi, people are still arguing that he had so many penalties. I think uh, five of his World Cup goals were penalties. And it doesn't really mean anything, all right? So the World Cup, still one of the greatest, all right? The shocks, the upsets, the disappointments. This is, this is all football brings. And if it favors you, you celebrate. If it doesn't favor you, you just take it on the chin and move on. All right. So in one word, just a one word answer because we're out of time. 
uh, would you, how do you rate this World Cup? One sentence, uh, this World Cup in terms of the standard of play compared to previous World Cups in this modern era? Just in one sentence, please. Fantastic style of play. All right. All right. All right. Well, we have to let you, you go now. Go. Uh, Thomas, thank you very much uh, for your, your time. A little messy agrees with you. Uh, mercy here. <laughs> a little messy <laughs> about uh, Cristiano Ronaldo because she's a um, you're a Liverpool fan, a Man U fan. But I know you like Ronaldo and Messi. Well, I know where you're actually headed <laughs> towards finding which of the you know clubs uh, are support English clubs. But we need to you know go. Thank you so much for uh, being part of the show. We do appreciate you every other time, and do have yourself a merry Christmas. It's what I do. Mercy and coffee. Thank you so much for having me. Right, right. That's the size of our package this morning. Um, please remember to follow us on uh, social media, Plus TV Africa, and on YouTube as well. We have two accounts, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We'll be back uh, on Monday with more on The Breakfast. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Boko. Have a great day. We'll join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. Please stay with us.